Hi everyone, thank you for joining this digital masterclass. Today we will be talking about how you can internationalize your fashion brand just as About You. My name is Tom Dupont, I am Director of Market Operations and Development at About You and responsible for our international business as well as since more than five years responsible for the internationalization strategy and the execution thereof uh, within About You. Over the course of this presentation we will cover the following topics. Firstly, we'll have a look at the About You brand and the Scale brand, give you a short introduction and talk to you about how exactly those brands interact with one another. Secondly, we'll have a look at the About You internationalization success story and give you some practical hints and tips on how you can apply that to your business. Thirdly, we will then recommend our approach for how you can put this all into practice and actually apply our playbook to your international fashion brand. And lastly, we'll end with some key takeaways and concrete next steps for you. If you have any questions during the presentation, please note them down. There will be a window to ask them at the end of the presentation. Let's jump straight into it with an intro on the About You brand. About You um, has two business lines. One is the About You fashion platform, as you can see on this slide. Um, the About You fashion platform, hopefully you're all familiar with it as it's a place that you have shopped yourself at one point in the past. On the other hand, we also have the scale commerce engine technology business where we provide b2b business services to other brands and retailers in order for them to scale effectively looking at the about you brand first so about you was founded in 2014 in hamburg germany back then our founders had a simple vision namely to digitalize the saturday shopping stroll in the case of hamburg through the mönkebergstraße they were able to do so and were able to bring this fashion stroll to the mobile device. Based on these six pillars that you see on this slide, we were then able to grow our brand throughout the next years. First off, About You is mobile born. What does that mean? It means that for About You, over 80% of our revenues are originating from mobile devices, whether it be from the app, uh, which is our flagship product, or from the mobile web device. Secondly, we've been able to build a vibrant community. We currently have over 45 million monthly active users, uh, which is something we're very proud of. Next, we were able to build a giant influencer network. We have over 20,000 influencers on record today, and we collaborate monthly with over 2,500 influencers. We put emphasis on unique storytelling. We most recently highlighted this as well with our About You Fashion Week in Milan, during which we were able to build an About You village uh, in the center of Milan and invite other brands to come to this village and present their collections and show how their brand ties into the About You brand. We are international. We are currently live in over 26 different markets. We put emphasis as well on being international and being internationally approachable and generating a love brand for us. And lastly, we've been able to connect over 2,000 brands to our platform, thereby generating a very desirable assortment for all our customers. Now, let's have a look at scale. Scale is the foundation for this About You brand, for our About You business. Scale is a modern software as a service commerce technology, meaning it is headless, meaning that it is API driven and cloud native. It provides all the capabilities that you need as a brand or as a retailer in order to focus on what's truly important for you, namely to focus on branding, focus on building and growing your assortment, focus on building customer loyalty and uh, customer satisfaction along the way. The scale technology provides the perfect foundation for you so that you can apply your omni-channel strategy in your business. All the hygiene factors you need to deliver this modern shipping approach towards your customers are provided for um, within scale. Next, let's have a look at uh, what scale is currently doing. Scale is what has been powering the About You success for uh, the last eight years to a point where in 2021 alone, we were able to generate over 3.5 billion in gross merchandising volumes within the About You shop. Not only is Scale responsible for the About You success, Scale also powers over 100 external online uh, brands. Some of the bigger ones here are Marco Polo, S. Oliver, uh, within the fashion space, but we also are active within the sports segment with Bayern Munich or within the home and living space uh, with Depot. 
Although we've only started scale recently and we only started to really scale up scale business model, we are already over 2.4 billion GMV with those external shops alone in 2021. Now let's jump over into the success story of About You. How exactly did we internationalize? And let me give you a few practical examples. As said, About You has been live since 2014. We originally launched in Germany. Shortly thereafter, we also went live in Austria and Switzerland. Uh, but truly our internationalization story only started around five and a half years ago, when we were, as maybe many of you here today, wondering about how do we even start to internationalize and maybe more importantly where do we start to internationalize for us the decision was made back then to look a bit closer to home first and enter belgium and the netherlands as a safe option because e-commerce was more developed already there compared to the rest of europe plus we had some synergy effects in our operations nevertheless we right away uh, also identified the potential in Central and Eastern Europe as there is very low competition there and there was a strong e-commerce growth year over year. So we also initialized a internationalization lane towards Central and Eastern Europe with first Poland, followed thereafter by Czechia, Slovakia, etc. etc. As you can see from this slide, we are currently live in over 26 markets, fully localized, and we've been able to grow the revenue share of all our international markets, so outside of the Dach area to almost 50% of our net revenues, something we're extremely proud of. Now, what's the secret behind this? The secret is, in our opinion, localization, localization, and again, localization. As a foundation, we have the Scale Commerce Engine technology, which allows us to offer full localization for each market. Uh, and within that, we've identified five different pillars, which in the next step, we're gonna have a deeper look into one by one. Starting here is the language. Respect the local language. No matter how small the market might be, it's really important that you offer the local language, that you approach the customers within their language, within their native language, so that you're able to get the best conversion rates. Secondly, uh, being able also to offer local promotions is very important. Engage your audience locally. So work together with them. We, I've created some creative campaigns around this, which also will have a deeper look in, in one of the next slides. Thirdly, understand that customer behavior and purchasing behavior is quite different uh, from market to market. Even markets which seem to be quite similar to each other will have distinct nuances. And it's important that we're able to reflect that also within our uh, shop. So being able to identify those and then sort your products accordingly to bring the best possible product market mix to the customer is key. Fourthly, we look at local payments. Payments is something that can truly make or break your shop. So there too, we have a deeper look into it and how this has played in About You's history. And lastly, local carriers. The carrier is the face that the customer will interact with the most. So make sure this is a respected local partner and that this partner can also offer the services and the reliability that you're looking for. First off, uh, localized language even for small markets. So here we have an example of our Croatian webshop, where you can see Croatia, but also Slovenia, both markets with relatively small number of inhabitants. However, it was critical for us to offer the local language and fully localize the shop in order to reach those zero effects that we're looking for and to get a good conversion rate. If you don't do this, you will miss out on either one of those and it will end up costing you more than just translating the whole shop or better yet, localizing the whole shop. Now, this also brings some challenges from time to time. Yeah? For example, in Greece, which is a high potential market, we noticed that implementing a non-Latin alphabet, of course, the Greek alphabet, posed some challenges. And this led to us, during the testing phase, finding out that we had issues with processing financial transactions for Greek customers. The reason was that the bank could not accept this alphabet. So we had to develop a smart solution in order to work around this, basically transliterate the Greek alphabet to Latin so that we were able to process those transactions and ensure that refunds and payments were going through correctly. Another example is the management of multiple plurals in Slavic languages. So in Polish, uh, Slovak, Czech, there are different uh, plurals. So not just the singular and the plural, but the different shapes of plurals within. And being able to support that also causes technical challenges. But it's important again to do it because customers will notice the difference and they will see your shop as lesser for it. Lastly, 
organizing a strong in-house team. At About You, we have for each country a country manager at the head, who is a native, supported by an assistant who is also native, so that they can always work together to double check and apply the 4i principle towards any customer communications which are going out, uh, out of the shop. Aside from that, we also work together with independent contractors, such as with Google, to do a periodical review and check whether we are still up to standards and hopefully we did not miss anything in our localization along the way. Now let's jump over into the campaigns part. So here, as mentioned before, engaging locally with your audience is very important. We have done so um, by, for example, introducing the Crazy Bet campaign, which we've now ran in most of our markets. During the Crazy Bet campaign, the country manager will be the face of the campaign and will engage the audience by telling them that there is a bet ongoing between us, in this case the employees, and the management. And the bet is all about reaching a certain goal with an Instagram or Facebook related to the number of followers or number of participants. So we're really trying to create this us feeling that the audience identifies together with about you against, in this case, the management. Once these goals are met, of course, there will also be a big reward. So we will actually offer 50% off of all items in the shop. So that generates quite a bit of buzz. Also, the goals are quite ambitious to reach. Along the way, we're going to incentivize this further by giving daily updates from our employees, for which we use actual employees, and we keep the production value at an amateur level so that we can inform the audience that, hey, we're getting closer to the goal, keep going, reach out to your friends and family, let's make this work, let's do this together. And then also, of course, celebrate together with the audience. Tell them, look what just happened, we can do it, we did it, and uh, now go shop because everything is going to be 50% off. Here on this slide, you can get an idea of what this looks and feels like. Uh, so as you can see on the left hand, we have our actual employees, who are taking a major part in this, promoting the, the campaign. And then on the other hand too, we are celebrating with actual employees to announce that we have now reached the goal. This of course also translates into an incredible revenue uplift. And here I brought some KPIs from our check launch. As you can see, we have increased revenues over 800%, increased the customer base for those days, the campaign compared to a regular week, over 650%, and maybe most importantly of all, we were able to increase the new customer quota during the campaign, generate an uplift of over 44%, which also in time meant that we had a larger customer base to work with, which also translated to loyal customers over time. As you can see, app installs increased by 4,600%. This is because the sale was in the app only. So of course, uh, we got a very high number of app installs. Next one is on the payment side. As mentioned before, payment methods can truly make or break a shop. So it would be easy to say, let's just implement all payment methods which are considered as relevant for a particular country. However, implementing payment methods can be quite costly. So, therefore, we need to identify which are the must-have payment methods and which ones are nice to have or can be added additionally later on once you are in a more developed state. Also, at About You, this is something we try to do, and we don't always get it right from the first point. For example, in Denmark, we originally thought we could start just with credit card offering, a pay later offering, and PayPal. However, we noticed quite a few challenges in the conversion step, particularly on the baskets checkout order success. And in the end, once we implemented mobile pay, and we did so, we noticed an almost 100% increase in our conversion rate. Meanwhile, mobile pay uh, makes up more than 65% of the payment share, so that explains why we had those challenges earlier on. Other examples of local payment methods are, for example, in Portugal, where you have the MBWay and the Multibanco model. With Multibanco, people will not confirm the payment in the shop, but rather reserve and go to an ATM offline to in the ATM then confirm the payment method. So this, for example, is a very challenging payment method if you're only used to working with electronic payments. Meanwhile, they also have the MBWay platform, which is in a mobile wallet and kind of replaces this, at least for younger generations. But depending on your audience, this might be something that has to be implemented and has to be considered. And then lastly, we also have cash on delivery. Uh, in the next slide, we'll do a bit of a deep dive here. 
as this is quite an interesting uh, payment method. So first off, for those who don't know it, cash on delivery is a payment method with which you do not pay in the shop, but you pay at the door to the carrier. Now, you can imagine that leads to quite a few challenges. One of those being that the logistics service provider is now suddenly also your payment service provider. Logistics service providers are not particularly known for being very tech, tech uh, fluent. So this can lead to some challenges, especially with uh, identifying settlements, identifying gaps and making sure that customer impact is uh, minimalized. Secondly, the payment and the refund process are being fully decoupled from one another. So there too, uh, payments are received at the door. However, refunds need to be made towards the bank account of the customer. So somewhere along the customer journey, we need to also uh, get this bank data from the customers without hurting our conversion. And thirdly, we are managing secure data with cash on delivery. Why? Because we have to get all this account data. We have to store also the bank data to make it easier going forward. So managing all that poses quite a few technical challenges. Also, it did so for us. So originally when we entered Central and Eastern Europe, that was the first countries with Poland and Czechia where we had to offer cash on delivery. And back then we noticed that once we started to get to scale, particularly in Czechia, there was quite a few cases of uh, heavy customer impact. The customers were not getting refunded uh, because we did not identify that the payment was made, etc. This even led to some negative press and we in the end decided to create a project around this and over the course of three months clean up our entire COD process. We've done so via this action plan. So first off we've integrated shipping data, so all tracking related data, so that we were able to say for every shipment whether it was correctly delivered and therefore paid for. Secondly, we created extensive reporting using this new data so that we could better monitor outstanding settlements as well as outstanding re refunds. And thirdly, we built closer ties to our logistics providers so that we can also create expectations towards them on how that exactly they can report this to us, how we can ensure that uh, customer impact is minimalized and also that there are no cash leaks along the way. All this led to us now proudly being able to say that we offer COD in 14 different markets and we on average uh, process over 25,000 COD transactions per day. Then last pillar of the fully localization, this is going to be the localized carrier part. So many carriers such as DHL, UPS, DPD, etc. They are able to offer the basic delivery in almost every country around the world. However, when we talk about e-commerce and offering the best possible customer experience, often customers have higher expectations than that. They don't just want to get the item delivered to them, they also want a convenient and easy way to return it. So being able to have a good network in the country locally is very important. Therefore, we work together with local partners. For example, in Romania, we work together with Fun Courier, who is the dominant uh, last mile delivery partner there compared to DHL who barely has any pickup points in that country. In addition, customers often uh, expect different services too. For example, in many Central Eastern and Southern European countries, there is still standard that e-commerce shops offer a return pickup service. And that all ideally without ever having to contact the carrier yourself. So for that too, About You has implemented a return flow as you can see on this slide here, where you as a customer can simply click through the items that you want to return, then identify uh, when exactly you want to have a pickup made. You will also double check the data that you've provided. And in case of COD, we can now also get your bank data or ensure that we have your bank data correctly. And then finally, everything gets confirmed uh, by the customer so that customer controls the whole process and until the day of pickup, um, they can just wait on the day they will receive an SMS from the carrier and that way they will be able to uh, make sure that the return happened very easy and conveniently for them. Now About You has been able to uh, put this whole process in a very lean way so that our go-to-market uh, plan or go-to-market playbook now takes up around three to six months. How I've been able to do this, um, it's by first from the moment that we make a decision to enter a specific country together with our managing directors based on a scoring model as will also be presented later on. 
we are able to initiate a project, right away identify what are these critical success factors, so what are the prior A features that need to be integrated. We will then run throughout a period of around three months. We will integrate everything, we will test everything to a point where we can initiate a go-live soft launch, as we call it. With a soft launch, we, we enable the shop for the public and we will just start to scale slowly using performance marketing channels only so that we have low volumes to test our operations and make sure that from a customer perspective, um, everything is, is okay. Then we have this window, the soft launch window of around two to three months, during which we're able to make sure that um, high traffic can be supported on the shop, operations run smoothly, and we also build a safety corridor in case we find out that there is a feature missing potentially. For example, this is the period during which we found out in Denmark that we had to integrate mobile pay and that we also took the necessary steps to do so. And then we have what's called our big bang, so our marketing launch, uh, during which we're really going to say, here we are on the market, we're going to use all online and offline marketing channels in order to get our message across that About You is now here, that we are a fashion platform and we plan to become one of the most important players in the market. On this slide, we can see the main aspects of this campaign phase. So how do we exactly do this? There's always three phases to our Big Bang approach. The first one is called the teaser phase. During the teaser phase, this is around five to seven days during which we're going to announce that something is coming about you. Something is about you. So we, we send around a very cryptical message that about you is going to hit the market without saying to customers or saying to the audience what exactly about you is. Um, then in the next step, we have the launch phase. So in the launch phase, it's then on the day itself. For example, during the teaser phase, we'll announce uh, there's something new about you coming on the 7th of October just to generate buzz so that people among each other also talk about this and they say, you know, have you seen this advertisement? Do you actually know what that's about? So that's our goal. Then on the 7th of October, we have the launch during which uh, we will really announce also now About You is here. We are a fashion platform and we're of course going to tie that in with some great promotions and some great sales campaigns. Typically, we also have an offline event at that time, working together with uh, local influencers and idols, uh, during which we will then be able to you know, really enforce this message and also use the influencers in order to build some trust in the About You brand. We then do this launch phase for around one week again. There we're really focused on generating as much as possible brand awareness in the market. And after that one week, we go into more of a product and content phase. We're going to continue to do campaigns, but less aggressively. And we're going to focus more on those channels which are uh, supported well, which are being, you know, which are performing well. As mentioned before, influencers are extremely important to our strategy, to the About You strategy. And so this is also something we do here. We work together with local influencers. We, we organize local influencer halls to drive the About You traffic. It's a part of our success. Yeah? For example, in Czechia, we work together with Karolina Kokova, who is a famous Czech model and has also been our face of the About You entry into the Czech Republic. We work together with local influencers to generate this high reach and as an added bonus, as mentioned before, we are able to create brand awareness and brand trust for About You as an extension of those influencers. In the next step, we'll have a look at our recommended approach to internationalization for your fashion business. As you can see on this slide, we recommend a three-step process. First off, we have to analyze the opportunity. We have to look at what kind of business are you in? Is it a premium business? Is it a um, middle business or not? And see what opportunity exists in the markets that you're targeting. Secondly, develop an entry plan based on those. By following a six step process, we will run through in a second. And lastly, executing on this entry plan and also learning along the way so that we can see exactly where did we go wrong or where could we improve and apply that to your next internationalization strategy. Firstly, we recommend that you use a scoring model to analyze the opportunity that you have. This is the first step in the internationalization process. And you need to have a clear understanding of the market attractiveness by, for instance, also analyzing the market size, uh, setting expected profit levels. So when do you want to reach? 
profitability. Also very important to consider the competition during this phase, to consider the different um, levels of customer behavior that you have and the resources that you have to support your specific market entry. Secondly, we want to develop this market entry plan, which considers six different parts. First one, you need to analyze the buying behavior of local customers. Secondly, we need to then, based on this buying behavior, uh, also select the assortment which is going to perform best. So what is our optimal product market mix? This is what we want to, to find out. Then work together with the marketing team to select those channels which would or should perform best in this case. Go over into positioning your price. So have a look again at the price. Do we need to adjust anything for this particular market? Is maybe the purchasing power a little bit lower in the market or higher? And if so, is there room for us to adjust our price accordingly? Lastly, set up a correct campaign plan to acquire these new customers, which is going to be key in the first 12 months of operations in a new market. And then define a detailed business case around all this so that you can really put this all into practice and go back to it in case of any further internationalization waves. Then as a third step, learn along the process. So also we at About You uh, do the same thing. We have developed this entry plan based on analyzing the opportunities, based on our scoring models. We define which countries to enter, etc. And then we also execute this and we learn along the way. So here we brought some examples of how this happened for About You. Firstly, on analyzing the opportunity. Um, for example, we've never entered the United Kingdom because of the high competitive pressures that exist there already with major players such as ASOS, Next, Zalando, name it. But also because there are uh, very strong legal uncertainties in the market. Back then related to Brexit, will it happen or not? But even up till today, there are still a lot of legal uncertainties related to e-commerce in that market. Secondly, we early on identified the high potential of Central and Eastern Europe by seeing that their competition uh, pressure was rather low and that there were high growth rates. So being able to combine that, we saw a big potential in those regions. Secondly, we developed an entry plan. So also here we use our market research that's available to identify key success factors. For example, in Poland, this relates to the usage of PayU and COD locally as payment methods, being able to support that. Secondly, we time our entry campaigns because in certain markets there will be regulated sales periods such as in Italy or Belgium, which usually takes place in winter or summer, during which all competitors are also going to be offering very uh, attractive sales. So of course we want to time our entry campaign not to fall into those windows, but to still find a good mix of seasonality effects of being able to sell our strongest assortment at the right time without um, ending up in these sale phases. And thirdly, we execute and learn. So we successfully executed our playbook in three markets simultaneously, namely in Hungary, Romania and Slovakia within a roughly six month period by applying learnings that we had gained from single market entries in Poland and Czechia the year before. We also reinforce our market position once we have attained market leadership or is a comfortable number two position by, for example, using our strong influencer network to create exclusive cooperations. Now, what does that mean for your business and what are some of the key pitfalls that we want you to avoid for your internationalization? First off, don't underestimate existing entry barriers. In particular, those which are implicit. What do we mean with that is that if you look at the existing customer base in a country, they might be very polarized towards certain competitors already. So being able to uh, convince and have customers churn away from existing competitors can be quite costly. And this can cause quite a bit of a entry barrier that you need to overcome. Secondly, do not overestimate your own resources, um, especially when you enter new markets. This can be quite stressful on the cash burn. So being able to manage that well and not going too far so that you don't run out of cash too early is extremely important. Do not neglect, neglect local peculiarities. So as mentioned before, respecting the local nuances in buying behavior, purchasing behavior, or general customer behavior is key. Now, so ensure that you put this into practice in your full localization strategy. 
Yeah, it's really important that we try to first select a bunch of countries, cluster some markets which have uh, similarities and then rather execute our strategy, see how it works, adjust anything that needs to be optimized and then go back towards your original development plan. Now let's go into some key takeaways and next steps for you. I hope that with this I have provided you some insights and ideas into how About You has executed its internationalization strategy and how you can take over some of the components to your fashion brand. Scale as a business also supports you with this. Scale allows you or brings the technical expertise that's needed in order to offer full localization and to really enable you to enter markets fast. Secondly, we can provide operational excellence. We have the B2C fulfillment services available that you need in order to quickly reach the international customers and reach them with a good customer experience behind it. And thirdly, we provide expertise on the marketing side too, so that we can really offer you the different channels that are available and give you advice towards which channels you should invest on in order to generate a successful internationalization um, approach and also get to a good number of uh, customers quickly. So let me end with this. If there are any further questions, uh, please feel free to ask them now as we'll be available to take your questions. Many thanks.